Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Daily IoT. On today's episode, we're gonna be talking about how much current you can draw from the five volt supply of the Raspberry Pi. Before we do that though, quick update, hockey project still going on. The reason I haven't had an update on this is because it's been running for so long. And so I did some low power code changes to uh, the firmware on this to do some actual sleep where the Wi-Fi module shuts down in between uh, pools from the stat API and the back end of Losant and still doing this every five minutes, but shutting a bunch of stuff down in between those five minute intervals. And I was able to get about three days of life out of this on the 400 milliamp battery. And that amounted to, I didn't count them all because there were a lot of them in Losant, but it was about 600 uh, check-ins to grab stats. And so I'm fairly confident at this point, if we go into a low power deep sleep mode, that it is not unreasonable that we could get an entire season of updates on a single charge. Um, again, if this is a desk ornament and we're just updating this after games have been played, you know, that's only 82 updates during the regular season. And you only need to update it if your player's playing, all that stuff we could figure out on the low sand back end. And so I feel at this point like we have accomplished what I set out to do. Again, I think I can get, we, we can get a whole season out of that. So, get out the thing here. We are gonna check off our low power requirement for the stat tracking hockey puck project. I'm not gonna call the project done because I still wanna work on it a little bit. I love this project so much. Um, I wanna polish it just a little bit more, but this is probably the last that you'll hear about it on the show. Um, this has been a great project. I love doing a little bit more with low sand particle. Um, really surprised at how well the particle does with low power using sleep modes. And so again, uh, really excited about that. That's the update for the hockey puck project. And so back to today's topic. I got a request from somebody to look at connecting a bunch of peripherals to a Raspberry Pi. And the question that came into my head was, how much, some of these are five volt components, how much current can I pull from the five volt rail on the Raspberry Pi? It seems like a simple question and maybe I just suck at the Googles, but I was not able to find a clear answer just by doing uh, my normal Google searches. And so one of the things I'm really trying to be better at in this entire journey is this idea of determinism, deterministic behavior. The great thing about hardware and software is how deterministic it is or should be. It seems like we're getting less deterministic over time for some reason, but this idea that it should behave exactly as you expect every single time, save certain failure modes, but those failure modes should be well understood. And so when I, had, when I have questions like this, I wanna know there is an exact answer and I wanted to know what that is. And so I went through a whole bunch of research to figure out the answer to this simple question, how much can I pull from the five volt rail that's exposed to the GPIO header on the Raspberry Pi, specifically the Model 3 um, is what this person was asking me about. And so after doing all that, I felt like an abbreviated walkthrough of sort of my process might be useful for some people to see how I go about answering questions like this. Now, disclaimer alert, I am not a electronics level nine ninja master. I feel like I understand things pretty well. Um, and so if anything I go through on this strikes you as off or wrong, please stick it in the comments below so we can talk about it. I feel like I've done uh, my due diligence and research on this to get this answer that I'm gonna go over. But uh, let's take a walk through the process of how I came up with the ultimate answer to this simple question. So the easiest place to start is our classic Google search, right? How much current can the Raspberry Pi source? And you're gonna find a lot of information. I found when I was doing these searches, I got a lot of information on recommended power supplies, the thing that actually powers the Raspberry Pi, and GPIO information. So the very first thing that you see here is this a maximum of 16 milliamps per pin, total current not exceeding 51 milliamps, and a lot of this, more of the same. What is the maximum current 
GPIO pins can output? And that's not really the question I'm looking for. I'm not looking to answer how much can an individual pin source, I wanna know how much I can pull off of the five volt rail. And so if I scroll down here, I it seems like I maybe start to find things that are helpful. Oh, look at this power supply from Raspberry Pi documentation. So I click on that. And then this again, just talks about how the Raspberry Pi 3 is powered from a micro USB supply. You'll want a two and a half amp power supply from a reputable retailer and things like that. And it talks about power usage and back powering. Again, nothing definitive about how much we can source from the pin. It does give you some handy information here about things like the HDMI port uses 50 milliamps and camera module requires 250 and keyboards and mice can draw, you know, anywhere from 100 to 1000 milliamps. Um, but again, not exactly what we are looking uh, for in my specific scenario. But let's come up here and see what we can do. Uh, it says if you want to learn more about different power requirements, come over to the FAQ page. So we do that. And this is also some very useful information. It talks about the different models of the Raspberry Pi, what the recommended power supply capacity is, as well as how much you can draw from USB peripheral peripherals, and also this typical bare board active current consumption. How much is it normally uh, consuming? How much current is it drawing? And this uh, typical consumption is based on a desktop computer configuration. So this is with a full desktop. These numbers would be lower, certainly in a headless mode or just running the console. And so, but it gives you a frame of reference. Again, we're looking down and talks about USB and how much you can source there. But then it also has, again, some interesting information about how much the Pi will draw under various circumstances at boot, idle, during video playback, under, you know, under stress, and then the different versions and numbers for those. And this is all great information, but still not the information that I'm looking for. However, it will come in handy once we get to where we're trying to go because we do need to know how much current is being pulled from the supply from just the Pi running because that's gonna come out of the total available that we have on the five volt supply. So finally, after lots and lots of searching, I landed on this schematics page, which you should definitely bookmark. This is great if you're ever interested in looking at certain things on the Pi. The caveat here is that these are what are called reduced schematics. And let me show you what I mean by that. We're going to start with the Raspberry Pi 3 because that is the model that I was looking to answer this question for. And the, the power supply module specifically has changed over various models. So make sure you're looking at the schematic for the, the Pi model that you are dealing with. And here we go. This is great. And we scroll down and oh, there's a single page. Obviously, this is not everything that is on the printed circuit board that makes up a Raspberry Pi. And you'll even see that the name up here says RPi3B reduced. And so this is all you are getting from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. However, it does have the information that we are looking for. We're gonna go ahead and zoom in, nice and big in the top left-hand corner, and we have power in. This is that micro USB jack that comes from your power supply right into the Raspberry Pi. And the very first thing that we see, these are different break off test points, is we have a fuse. And so when we talk about how much power we can, or how much current we can pull from the five volt supply, well, this is our very first limiting factor. If we pull more than this fuse can handle, it's going to trip and we get no more power. And so the cool thing about this is the documentation that they do give you we can just grab this. This looks like a part number. This SM MS MF250. So let's just copy that. Come over here and go to DigiKey. And we'll paste it in. We don't need the dash in the front there. And here we go. Right up the front. And we have um, a bunch of information here, but this this 250 version, you will see if you look through this and analyze it. It says it has a, a hold current of two and a half amps and a trip current of five amps. Well, this was new information to me. And please, if you know more about this, please enlighten all of us in the comments. But after a bunch of research, I found out that the hold current is the minimum amount of current that will trip 
the fuse, that can trip the fuse. So you're never gonna trip below two and a half amps. The trip current, however, is the minimum amount of current that will definitely trip the fuse. And so saying that another way, nothing under 2.5 is going to trip it. Anything over five is definitely going to trip it. Well, what does that mean for this huge gap in between? Like at three amps or three and a half amps or four amps? Well, that's what's known as the dead band. And the behavior in that is really what software people would call undefined. It really depends on how much current, for how long, what the temperature of the component is. There's a lot of things. And so that, that dead band is the zone where it's not guaranteed to not trip, but it's also not guaranteed to trip, uh, if that makes sense. And so really what that means to me is that everything else on my board better be able to handle five amps because that's the only real guaranteed trip point. And so for our purposes, we'll say anything above two and a half amps is getting into the trip zone. And so we might start running into problems. So we're going to pretend for the purposes of the discussion, we don't want to force anything over two and a half amps because we're going to get into the undefined area. So this fuse is going to put that limit at 2.5 amps. All right, which is pretty good. So next up, we're gonna come through. I'm not gonna talk a lot about this block right here. Uh, there's an excellent YouTube video that talks about this idea of a P MOSFET uh, reverse voltage protection, which is what this is. Basically, this says, uh, I'm not gonna let you hook things up backwards and damage the Pi. It's, it's really just for protection, this whole block here. And so it's not going to limit our current in any way. The, the MOSFET will, will handle plenty. And so then we come out here and we get this net indicator, this five volt. And so now this five volt is what is tied to all of the other points of this schematic. So anywhere you see five volts, it's getting it essentially from this point right here. And so there's a lot of interesting stuff that you can do with this. You can see uh, we come in five volts here. Let's, let's zoom in on this and look at this just briefly. This is not the point of this video, but it's fun to see. We've got that same five volts here that comes into this chip or component, and we pop out to a 3.3 volt and a 1.8 volt net. And that's, those are other voltages that are available on the Pi. And so you can do the same thing. You can copy this part number, look it up on DigiKey and see, you'll find out that this is a DC to DC converter that has a single input, but allows you to select components like these inductors and capacitors to create a certain, uh, and as well as the resistors to create uh, different voltage outputs. In the Raspberry Pi case, they have chosen the components to create a 3.3 volt and a 1.8 volt output, which is pretty cool. However, I digress back to the question at hand, which is how much can we pull from the five volt rail on the header pin? Well, luckily enough, in this reduced schematic, we have the GPIO expansion. And so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna zoom in and I'm gonna do some scroll work here. All right, let's see if we can go a little bit bigger. Okay, cool. All right, you can see again, we have this five volt net name. So that's, we're getting that from up in the top where we were just looking and this connects directly through, it's got a little, uh, what I assume is like a filter capacitor right here to the GPIO header right here. These are the two pins. If you look at a diagram for what the pinouts are, these are the two five volt pins. And so as far as I can tell, from the information provided in this reduced schematic, there is nothing else that would limit the current consumption other than this fuse right here. And so we have a max, I'm gonna say 2.5 amp draw. Now, again, that is not how much current we can pull from that header because remember we have all these other things happening like at boot, we're pulling on the Pi 3, we're, we're pulling almost an amp just to boot up and at idle, we're pulling 300 milliamps. And so we have to subtract out things like HDMI or USB peripherals or things like that that are also gonna go into that total 2.5 amp. However, that does give me a much better idea when I'm hooking up things that draw power from the header. Uh, it gives me a better understanding of how much current I can realistically pull before my Pi starts running into problems. So, All right, so hopefully you found some value in that, um, in the process that I go through, like I said, to answer questions like this that come up in the course of the projects that I'm working on. Now, 
fun fact of the day. You notice when we're looking at those schematics that they were reduced or abbreviated schematics. It's not a schematic of everything that's on this board. It's mostly just power and like the headers and things like that, um, HDMI and camera and, and, and that sort of thing. And uh, I wanted to, tr to try and find a full schematic, which they did have on earlier versions. I believe it might've been the very first version of the Raspberry Pi and found out straight from the horse's mouth that the Raspberry Pi has never been open hardware. I'll put it up on the screen right now so you can see it straight from Ben uh, from the Raspberry Pi organization, which actually was news to me. I always thought it was open hardware and software, and he clarified it is just open software, not open hardware. And so um, I'll link up that uh, article or issue there in GitHub where people are asking for the full schematics because that's what makers do. They want full schematics. Um, you know, a little bit of a lame conversation in that issue where, you know, some people said, well, we don't release the schematics because it's actually a lot of work, which is total BS garbage. I mean, they've made the product, they have the schematic. The work involved is releasing it to the public. And so, um, and, and by the way, I'm totally cool with the answer of we're not open hardware, we're not giving it to you. Um, just say that. I mean, that's cool. Like, I accept that answer. Trying to say, oh, it's a lot of work to do that. Ah, that's just lame. And a couple of people called that out saying like, it's actually more work for you to create the reduced schematics because you have to take the real one that you already have, boil it down, whatever. I'm not getting it. Like I said, I don't really care if, that it's not open hardware. It's just, you know, let's be straight with people. That's all I'm asking. So that's our fun fact for the day. Raspberry Pi, not open hardware, just open software. Okay. Question of the day. I had it before I started filming. I've been doing better about thinking about it beforehand, but now I lost it. Oh, I remember now. Okay, this idea of the max current draw of the Raspberry Pi. Again, it's got that, that fuse that we talked a little about, about the, the dead band and how it could trip anywhere in there, definitely above five amps, but not uh, below two and a half amps. And, uh, but again, you're only gonna get as much power, uh, you, can, you can only source as much power as your power supply can handle. So I don't have one handy, but that little thing that you plug into the wall, if it's a crappy power supply, you're not gonna get what the electronics on the Pi can handle because the voltage might sag or droop and run into things there. So that was a really long setup for the question of the day. But the question of the day is, if you have a Raspberry Pi, what is the power supply that you use? I know Raspberry Pi has an official, very expensive one, but there are also other uh, ones out there that people use, some good, some not so good. What power supply do you use for the Raspberry Pi? And if you can stick a link down below and do you love it, hate it, that would be awesome. Thank you so much for watching Daily IoT, the show where together we're learning how to make the internet of things one day at a time.